the biggest what, challenges. What are the big changes in the in the board work in yes, the years, years to come? Addressing the headline uh, straight away. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I, um, I think that uh, geopolitical um, uh, landscape and the challenges uh, that we have ahead of us, um, I think, was uh, well mapped uh, um, by by Mr. Reinfeldt, um, um, and that's that's a challenge of its own. Um, it, 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 it will dominate a lot of the discussion because it has a direct impact on the strategies of the companies that we are working on, all of us. Um, and the board agenda increasingly is about making sure that the company has the right strategy and it's well implemented. So, uh, a couple of words. Obviously, the um, trade agenda uh, will be changing. Uh, WTO um, uh, the, these three letters are, are no longer in the, um, in, the, in the front page of the FT because uh, the, the organization doesn't seem to exist, so to speak, mm. in the mindset. Uh, there's talk about Mr. Trump's trade agenda, there's talk about Brexit, there's talk about which way will Europe go, um, how will, will it treat, treat Google, um, how will it uh, set, set the trade agenda uh, uh, in, in reaction to uh, potential Brexit and the US agenda and so on. So all of our companies will be impacted on all of those questions. Mm. And we really don't know on what is going to happen. Not, not only Brexit is unknown, but, uh, but also Mr. Trump's agenda and how he will conduct that, that agenda. It seems that increasingly to me that he wants to run US as if it was his company. Mm. And if he can change the rules of the game, fine, he will make sure the, the rules of the games are being changed. But it seems that he's accepting that, that not so many rules will necessarily change, but that he will force a lot on others being the biggest player in the room. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the way I'm handling US at the moment, and uh, in my mind, and Brexit uh, Martin Wolf today in the Financial Times uh, wrote a column uh, saying, sleepwalking into a chaotic Brexit. Mm. I think that's the great summary. Uh, and um, I think the, uh, U uh, the UK administration has a serious problem, much bigger than we actually do on the European continent. Mm. So European Union will prove to be a blessing um, in this sort of a situation. In terms of the boards, in a way, what this uh, summarizes into is that boards increasingly has to make sure the, the board has to make in each company make sure, at least in the major major companies, that the company has a foreign policy, so to speak, an understanding on what to do in different kind of contexts that are possible outcomes of this mess we are in. I guess in here you. So I, I just want to concentrate on one topic, um, one, one area in this landscape. Uh, there are others as well, but. Yep. Uh, so I, you I would agree with the sentiment that open small economies are the hardest hit, also because the companies here have had no choice but to go international, and we are sort of feeling the pressure of that <laughs> in the future much more. Absolutely. Than before. Uh, many of you asked to remind uh, you about the hashtag, so it was hashtag ownership 2017. So that's the one. You should please use if you want to ask questions. But let's continue the round. Thank you. I was very inspired by Mr. Reinfeldt's presentation and would actually like to comment. I totally agree on some points and then disagree on others. Uh, first of all, you mentioned digitalization, and it's part of the so-called fourth industrial revolution. And to my mind, all the changes in the businesses and in societies at large are somehow replying uh, from people's point of view to this question of coping with this kind of revolution. It's not only industrial revolution, it's uh, to a very large degree a scientific revolution. Mm -hmm. Because uh, different technologies are coming together uh, not only artificial intelligence, but also nanotechnologies and uh, many others. 
and the changes will be huge. Mm. But then uh, later on, you uh, encouraged the growth of the population because we'll have a huge middle class with wonderful opportunities. And, and now it seems to me that as a consequence of automization and robotization, the middle class is shrinking. <laughs> and because it seems to be shrinking, there are these social upheavals because uh, the middle classes in different societies feel betrayed. They were chasing a dream and now it seems to be a dead end. They have nothing to strive for anymore. And then we see this political phenomena that may seem to be a little strange if we don't look into this economic process. Well, not only the middle class is shrinking, but also middle management. Because as a consequence of this uh, fourth industrial revolution, uh, middle managers' jobs can actually be managed through artificial intelligence. So uh, that middle is also shrinking. And as far as values are concerned, the gold middle way that we used to have in Swedish, lagom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't seem to exist anymore. Mm. Uh, we see the extremes, but uh, we are not very well aware of what is enough what is a reasonable share for all of us to have. Mm -hmm. And that also causes some political issues. But maybe a little bit more lightweight remark about board work. Because uh, my favorite idea these days is what comes after humanity. What kind of composition of board uh, members we are supposed to have to compete with artificial intelligence. There is a firm in Hong Kong that has actually appointed an, uh, a machine, an artificial intelligence machine, to the board <laughs> to, to <laughs> keep up with the kind of phenomena that digitalization uh, makes us face. So uh, can we be outstanding in some ways as human beings? Because we know that deep learning, learning machines, easily relate to things that can be repeated all over again. If we have one million cases of something, the machines can easily learn uh, that. So, we need something unique. Any human being who can produce something unique will, <laughs> will beautifully mm, uh, fill uh, his or her position. But uh, I'll, I'll get back to these mm -hmm. topics. Thank you. Let's uh, continue the route. I think I would like to combine this discussion about the macroeconomic and geopolitical situation. What does this really mean for most of the boards in the Nordics, which are in the receiving end? Mm -hmm. The middle-sized and even big Nordic companies are more, more or less in the receiving end of a lot of the changes. Whether we want or have an ambition to actually say something about it, where we wish Trump for whoever go with, we will be in the receiving end. Now, what does this then mean for a single board? First of all, it means that the board needs to get much more agile. Quick, things will change. You know, this old-fashioned, we have a six board meetings a year and one strategy meeting where we think big things for two days and everything will be beautiful, is dead. Most of the boards have not yet realized it's dead. Most of the boards still continue to work with this way. But the companies who want to survive another next 10 years, they need to take a dramatic look how they work as a board. So the speed effect on the board work, what does it really mean? Instead of having a long talks, that's one key element. The second element, which I think was very well done on Risto, is the whole thing about corporate governance. The boards are overwhelmed by corporate governance, and it will become a hygiene question. The huge thing for this one is for the boards, how do you ensure that your focus is on the business and not on the governance work? And how do you do this in a very effective way? Again, need for the spending time on the business is huge. Uh, and you need to reflect on that one. Now, this all comes to a real fact, which is human beings, as we're all in here. 
We will talk about IE as a part of the board. I will love the fact to have a, able to have a, have a board report sent to me where I can actually go and ask the IE saying, now, I really question that division cross margin on this place. Could you tell me what in real is happening? Mm. I will love that. I will be even more difficult board member after that when that <laughs> happens than I'm at the moment. But that is my life, what I will look for the IE to help the board people. But it needs to be a human being. Now, that means that you will need the board people which are able to do much more complex, understand much more complex things, be ahead of things, be able to put them in a very specific on that company's issues and understand what they do and have a board, combined board, where you combine these things and a board that works very well together. All respect to IE, all respect to all of this one, each and every company will perform in the end as well as the board will help or hinder it to perform. Mm -hmm. And having sat in quite a few boards, I can see the difference if there's been a board that's been agile, challenging and motivating, or if there's a board which has been a nice or dictators or uh, letting the, board, the management doing whatever else. I can see it. And the cleanup after that kind of thing for a board is a huge work to do. So in the end, the board is a unit that needs to work under all these macroeconomic things. And we need to really think about how do we in practice make this work? Because otherwise the Nordic companies will go in a very quick death. And that would be devastating for the Nordics. Mm -hmm. Would you also see the board as a, a big part of building the whole agile culture in a, in a company? So showing example and Absolutely. trying to get that done in all levels. And the, the issue is the pyramid, even, even how much we want to turn it this way around to the consumer or the customer, this is the way. If the board does not ask the tough questions, if the board does not ask the management what is done, it might happen, it might not. But if the board asks, trust me, it happens. Mm. So, so, so you need to take a leadership. And I think the final thing that I, I would actually add on that one in the leadership, I don't have an answer, but somehow the boards need to get into the macroeconomic de debate. The things about the robots, the middle class, that's the people where most of you are selling something to or they are the workers of us. So somehow we have to break this huge issue of companies being... Uh, um, not willing to, whoever the representative's company, being part of this discussion, because it will come back to them. It's their employers, it's their customers. Mm. So that's another way of leadership. You know, the leadership needs to go downwards, but also outside somehow. Thank you. Let's continue the round of biggest challenges to board work. Well, just to comment on the middle class, um, we see shrinking numbers of the middle class in the United States and the United Kingdom. And, and therefore, we might think that that's all over the world, I would say that this is linked to rising inequalities and has provoked in their societies the birth of Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn. So uh, there is always a logic uh, when this happens, but that do not mean that you have a shrinking middle class worldwide. That's not true. Uh, we are trying to project the middle class of China. And just uh, a decade ago, it was said to be in a round of tenth of million. Now we are projecting that the middle class in China has outgrown the US population of 330 million inhabitants. So the reshape of who is middle class and where are the numbers growing is now changing rapidly. And that's creating a lot of um, tension on the United States and United Kingdom. And they are not meeting it head on by voting in the president or taking decisions to actually reform themselves to become more competitive. Absolutely not. They are voting a president, throwing them back to the 50s and voting Brexit thinking they are still with the Queen, Queen Victoria mid-1850. So th this is typical. Don't think that everyone loves change and what the ever reaction is, is try to meet this head on. Every crisis I've been uh, as a politician or the prime minister, all the uh, board directors, all the management teams I met, they didn't tell me to increase the path of change. No, they said, help us to save everything we have before it's destroyed. Give us resources, free society, uh, shelter us from everything that is happening now. So we are not preparing, and US and UK is absolutely not. I'm just tra trying to say that it's reshaping the world, and it's the conditions of tomorrow you need to find.